In this tutorial, I will explain how you can use Microbit and the Key Studio Sensor Shield to create a device which will enable you to control servo motors using a joystick. When you use the joystick, the analog value of the X and Y axis and the digital value of the Z axis will appear on the LCD. Each of the servo motors should also spin in response to input from the joystick. You will need a Microbit, the Key Studio Sensor V2 Shield, an LCD together with a backpack, six AA batteries, a battery pack for six AA batteries with a DC connector, two micro servos, the Key Studio joystick module, and about nine FF jumper wires. You can find many of these components in the Key Studio 37 in 1 starter kit. Details about the kit can be found at links one and two in the notes. You may also need a USB-C to USB-A adapter if you have a more modern computer. You can find an image of these components in the notes at link 5. Construct the device exactly as it appears in the schematic diagram. You can find this at link 4 in the notes. You should be particularly careful to ensure that the cables are plugged into the correct sockets of the sensor shield. You should be able to slide the micro bit smoothly into the sensor shield with just a little bit of pressure. Make sure the LED side of the micro bit is facing upwards. Once you have completed constructing the project, it is time to create the program. So the first thing you should do is navigate to the Make Code website. When you get to Make Code, you want to select New Project. And once a new project's created, you should name it Joystick. Then within the project page, you need to select Extensions and you can copy and paste the URL here, it'll be in the notes under the video and then press enter and it will find the correct extension for the LCD and then select this extension. Now you can see we have the LCD on the menu and you can choose the blocks relevant to the LCD. Okay, we've got on start and forever. Navigate to the LCD section which is brown and select the first block which is the LCD address drop it inside in start. Then select another block. This one will set the LCD backlight on, drop it also in start. Then go to LED and select more, and then LED enable, false. Now we'll use forever. Go over to the menu and select LCD, and select LCD clear, just to clear it at the start of the program. Now we're going to make three variables. One will be called X, one will be called Y, and one will be called B. Next, we'll drag set B to zero, and we'll duplicate this two times, once for each of our variables, so we can set them at the start of the program. So X will be the first one, Y the second, and B the third. Then we'll go down to pins, and we'll select analog read pin and we'll drag that across and we're going to duplicate it two times so we've got three in total drop it inside each of the gaps over here and we'll change analog read pin to p1 for x to p2 for b and we'll leave y at p0 then go back to pins select servo write pin p0 we'll duplicate this once again so we've got two of them and then we'll go down to pins and select this map block and we'll duplicate it and we'll nest it just inside the servo right pin block okay we'll combine them together and drop them into forever then we go back to variables and select x and drop it in the top here back to variables, select y and drop it in the top of the second section and we'll change low to four and too high to 180 and on the lower section, we'll change from low once again to 4. And too high to 180 again. Then we'll go to logic and we'll select an if and else. And we're going to select the equal symbol again from logic and nest it in here. Back to variables, take the B, drop it in next to if. So if B is equal to, we'll go to pins and select digital right pin PO and nest it just inside here but change it to P5. Duplicate that, drop it inside else and change the value to 1. 
Now we'll go back to LCD and select LCD show string and LCD show number. And we'll nest it underneath. We're going to duplicate show string and duplicate show number. So we have and we should duplicate each of them again. So we've got six blocks. Show string and show number repeated three times. Go to pause and it should say at 100 milliseconds and drop that at the very end of the program. And then we'll change the string here to X, the string down there to Y, and the final string to B for each of the variables. Then we'll take X and drop it up here, Y down here, and B down in the bottom section. Finally, we'll change x here to 3, x down here will change to 8 in y, x down here will change to 11, and y down here will change to 1. x down here should be 3, and y down here should be 1. And with that, our program is just about completed, so then it is time to get your device and plug it into your computer. Make sure that the cable is plugged into the micro bit and not the sensor shield when you're downloading. Now, if your micro bit and adapter are working correctly, as soon as you plug them in, a micro bit icon should show up on your desktop. Once you see that micro bit icon appear, then you can click on the download button in make code. And once the program has completely downloaded, and then you can drag and drop the download file and just drag it and drop it and release it directly on top of the micro bit icon on your desktop. If it is downloading correctly, then you should see that it is copying and you'll see a flashing light on the bottom of your micro bit. Hopefully once you download the program, your device immediately works as intended. But if not, there's a few things you can try in order to get it working correctly. If you cannot see anything on the LED, you may want to get a screwdriver and twist the potentiometer on the back. You should also carefully trace each cable and compare them against the schematic diagram. You should also make sure the DC cable from the batteries plugs into the back of the sensor shield, as in this image. Also double check your program is identical to the original. You can find the original program at link 7 in the notes.